This is the final chapter of this wonderful pothe and it was written by BV Dev. The reason for this was that Dabulkar had to face a lot of poverty in his life and he was rather thrifty in his ways. In fact, he recycled everything. Thus, he wrote the OVs of the chapter on scraps of paper and then sent them to the printers. And when the last chapter was to be printed, the papers could not be found. And those scraps that were found by his son Gajanan Rao with a great deal of effort were indecipherable. Hence, B.V. Dev wrote this chapter. Now I shall talk a little about the Sri Sai Leela magazine in which the Charitta was published. The first issue of the Sri Sai Leela magazine was published in April 1923 and Lakshman Ganesh alias Kaka Mahajani was the editor of it. Dabulkar commenced writing the Poti in Shake 1844, that is 1922, in the month of Chaitra and completed the 52 chapters by Shake 1851, that is 1929, in the month of Jeshta and it was published in this magazine as the Sanstan was going through some financial difficulties and thus they could not print and publish the Charita. So, when the OVs of the last chapter were not available, it was decided by Kaka Mahajani, the editor, and Baba Sahib Tarkad, the treasurer of the Shri Sai Baba Sanstan that B.V. Dev would write the Avantarnika and so it came to pass. And so we devotees got this wonderful Pote. The Pote is a sacred religious text and the Shri Sai Sacharita is a wonderful Pote. It is composed in verse called Ovi and styled on the famous Eknath Bhagwat. Dabalkar first visited Shirdi in 1910 and requested Baba to allow him to write his Charitra life story. Baba gave him permission to do so. The Sri Sai Sat Charita has 53 chapters and 9,308 ovies. It was first published in the Sai Leela magazine and then published as a poti. This poti should be in the house of every Sai devotee and read with love and devotion. Baba will be pleased and will remove poverty and ignorance. He will bestow knowledge, wealth and prosperity. With a concentrated mind, if one reads at least a chapter daily, it will bring him abundant happiness. This book should be read on Guru Purnima, a day celebrating the ritualistic worship of the Guru on the full moon night in the month of July and also on other holy days. If the study of this book is done, all your desires will be satisfied and Sai will make you cross this Bhav Sagar. The sick get healthy, the poor get wealth and the mind will become steady, states the Phalastuti or the epilogue. The Pote ought to be venerated and revered by wrapping it in ochre-coloured cloth made of a natural fabric like silk or pure cotton. And it should be placed in the temple of your home besides the photograph or idol of Baba. An arti should also be performed to it. We also place the poti along with our jewellery and valuables and worship it on Lakshmi Puja during the festival of Deepavali. As 
It is the most valuable asset that we own. And on Vasant Panchami, when Saraswati Puja is performed, we also worship it. We also carry it on our head if we need to take it to the pendol for Samode Parayan, as it is Baba's Vani. Thus, if there is one poti that you own, it ought to be the Shri Sai Satcharita, as it has all the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Gitas, the law of karma and Rinanabandh, and most importantly, Baba's sayings and Updesh in it. Now I shall narrate the content of each chapter of the Charita. The first chapter contains the invocation of the Divine, veneration of the family guru, relatives, other gurus, the saints, the virtuous who are incarnations of God Almighty, and to the Sadguru Sai Bhagwan, who is worthy of being surrendered to, being the secret treasure of moksha. Then he describes the Leela of Baba grinding the wheat. Baba then asks the four ladies to throw the flower along the boundaries of Shirdi and thus prevents the epidemic of cholera from entering the village and saves all the villagers. Chapter 2 states the purpose of the present work and describes the naming of Tabulkar as Hemadpant, confuting to the argument that the Guru is not necessary and how Hemad had Sai Darshan. Chapter 3 How the command came from Sai's mouth for the writing of this book and a full account of the Rohila forms the content of the third chapter. Chapter 4 There follows a detailed narration in the fourth chapter as to the reason for the appearance on this earth of sadhus and saints who are the adornment of God, the controller of the universe. This chapter also has the description at length of how Sai, a Datta avatar and a veritable Kalpatru first came to the holy land Shirdi. The fifth chapter deals with how Baba disappeared from Shirdi only to appear in the company of the wealthy Patil to the astonishment of all. How he moved about with Gangagir and other saints and how he created a garden himself carrying water for it on his head. This is chapter 5. Chapter 6 There is the interesting narration in the 6th chapter of the great festival of Ram Nomi about Bala Bua Kirtankar and of the renovation of the mosque. In the 7th chapter comes the narration of Baba's Samadhi and Khanda Yoga, Dhoti Pauti, his pretense about being a Hindu or a Muslim, and also the incomprehensible mind of the saints. This chapter also describes Baba's dress, his conduct, his giving medicines to the sufferings, his clay pipe, his caste, the dhuni, lighting of the mosque and the temples, Baba's illness and the service by the devotees, which are an amazing spectacle, the leprosy of Bhagoji Shinde and treating Kapade's son suffering from plague, Nana Saib Chandurkar's wish to visit Pandarpur. All these are narrated by the learned Hemad Pant in this chapter. Chapter 8 The eighth chapter has a happy narration of the unique importance of human birth, a description of Baba's manner of collecting alms, 
by Jabai's service to the saint, Baba's extraordinary way of taking meals, and how Baba, Tatya, Malsapati, all three slept in the mosque at night, and Baba's remarkable love, which was equal for both. The mutual and loving relationship between Kushal Chand of Rahata village and Baba, who was a mine of peace and knowledge. All this is in the same chapter, that is, chapter 8. The ninth chapter gives an account of the great repentance of disobeying Baba's orders on the part of a devotee, Tatya Patil, and a great Englishman. It also narrates very cleverly how Baba used to eat the food given in alms after first getting the Panch Mahayagna performed along with Baba's authority for collecting alms. And the excellent story of how Baba Sahib Tarkar, a strong follower of the Prarthana Samaj, became Baba's steadfast devotee. Chapter 10 narrates about the greatest of yogis, that is, Baba sleeping on a wooden plank suspended from the roof, which was about four arms in length and the measure of the thumb and the little finger extended in width, as also a moving account as to when Baba first put his foot in Shirdi, how many years he stayed there when he gave up his body, and about the steadfast, constant attitude of Guru Raya in guiding the people to the right path and showing gaulish tendencies outwardly, while perfectly at peace and totally desireless within. This chapter also includes the description of the most remarkable skill of the Sadhguru in explaining the characteristic of Dharma as explained in the Vedas and Shastras, his skill in imparting worldly and spiritual instructions, and in testing the mind of both devotees and non-devotees. Baba Seat his knowledge, his personality, his authority as a Guru, his power and greatness, all this makes up Chapter 10. Chapter 11 dwells on Baba's worldwide fame of being in a state of Satchit Anand, the loving devotion of Dr. Pandit, a description of Siddhi Falke's reverence for Baba. That is chapter 11. Baba's control over menacing rain clouds and over the whirlwind, his protection to the devotees from the roaring fire of Dunimai. This makes up chapter 11. In chapter 12, there is a charming description of various incidents relating to Kaka Mahajani, Dhumal. Nimonkar, a Mamledar and his friend, and a doctor, Agnihotri Mule Shastri of Nasik, a man of doubting nature and a devotee of Golab Swami, as also the marvel of the Sai Darshan. This account is given in this chapter. How Bala Shimpi's malaria was cured by feeding rice and curd to a black dog and Bapu Sahib's cholera by giving him walnuts pistachio is narrated in chapter 13. This chapter also deals with many stories such as the cure of earache of Swami from Alande by mere blessings, that of the diarrhea of Kaka Mahajani by giving him peanuts was cured. The stomach ache of the devotee, Dato Pant from Harta, by blessing him in front of all. The consumption of Bhimaji Patil by applying Udi, these are all given in the same chapter. 
and they are all cured. Chapter 14 gives us the story of the famous merchant from Nanded, Sait Ratanje Parsi, who was sad at heart for want of a son and was made most happy by a gift of a son. And also the wonderful story how everyone recognized Saint Malvi Saab, who was working as a coolie by the sign given by Sai. Chapter 15 describes how Baba explained to Das Kanu the style of Kirtan by Narad, how he made Sholkar drink tea with sugar in fulfillment of his vow, how Baba narrated the story of the lizard that came from Aurangabad to meet her sister in the mosque, merely from their chirping. Chapter 16 Interesting story in Chapter 16 is about how a gentleman with wealth, children, etc., on hearing Baba's fame, came to Shirdi to get Brahma and was told that he who desires Brahma has first to renounce worldly life, giving up completely the hankering after wealth. And how, though the man had bundles of notes in his pocket, would not even lend five rupees to Sai, yet expected to get the Brahma Gyan. 17th chapter This story is the fascinating style of Sai's instruction joined with the blessed language of Hemad. In this chapter, 16 is like adding sugar to milk. The same story continues in chapter 17, which is an interesting narration at length about Brahma Gyan and the giving up of greed or wealth altogether. Chapter 18 has a skillful narration by Hemad of the story of Sate reading the Guru Charitra, the advice and instructions to Radha Bhai Deshmo and Baba's Anurag to Hemad Pant. Chapter 19 tells us in greater detail the story of this Anurag and the deep thought and reflection of the instruction given by Sai. Then follows the story in Chapter 20 as to how Das Ganu started writing Ishyavasya Bhavartha Bodhani and asked Baba the doubts that rose in his mind while writing and how Baba told him that his doubts will be resolved by Kaka Dikshit's maidservant. Such is the sweet narration of Sadhguru's unique power described here. Chapter 21 narrates the story of the bestowal of grace upon a righteous deputy collector on another learned man called Patankar and a third individual, a lawyer. Chapter 22 describes how Baba said to all the people that the Masjid Mai took us safely across the worldly life, that she was herself Dwaravati and Dwarka. Not one of them understood the real significance of his words. How Baba extolled the virtues of this Masjid Mai and averted the calamity of a snake bite to Medikar and Bhutte, cured Amir Shakkar's rheumatism, averting the danger of a snake bite to him, and how Baba averted the danger of a scorpion bite to Hemadpant and of a snake bite to others, thereby warding off the calamity of a premature death. Chapter 23 describes how the doubts of a student of yoga were resolved and Mother Rao's snake bite cured, describing beautifully Baba's dhuni, the fuel for it, and the story of the killing of a goat. 
as also Baba's respectful treatment of Bade Baba, but the latter's lack of faith in the Guru's command and the greed of his discontented nature for more, however much he might get. The steadfast faith of a great devotee, Kaka Saheb Dikshit, in his Guru's command and the marvellous Leela of the Sadguru. Chapter 24 contains an account of how Baba made an excuse of parched grain to teach Hemad Pant that without remembering the Sadguru, one should not enjoy any sensual pleasures. And how Sai sparked off a quarrel between Anna Babre and Mausi Bai, as the poet brings out the novelty of jokes and humour in these situations. In Chapter 25 comes the story of Damu Anna Kasar from Ahmednagar, who wished to trade in cotton and rice on a large scale, and how Sai, the son of knowledge, told him that he will incur a loss in such a trade, but that he would get a child if his wife eats a mango. The 26th chapter tells about a devotee called Pant, who had taken Anugra from another saint and was quickly given a mark of this by Baba to his great delight. In the same chapter is included the story of a devotee, Harish Chandra Pitale, whose epileptic son was cured of the disease merely by a glance of grace. That Pitale was given three rupees by Baba, who said, that two rupees had been given already to him earlier, and he was told to keep them in the puja room. Chapter 27 tells the story of Kaka Mahajani, who gave Bhagwat Poti in Baba's hand with a desire to get it back as prasad. But instead, Baba gave it to Madhav Rao Deshpande and the story of how the Vishnu Sahasranam, which was among the potis of a Ramdasi, was given by Baba to Sham Rao without the knowledge of the Ramdasi. And by giving the Vishnu Sahasranam, how that compassionate Sai bestowed grace on Mother Rao. Chapter 28 dwells on how devotee Lakmi Chand Munshe Chidi Bai from Bharanpur and the meritorious Brahmin Megha came to Baba's feet. How, by appearing in a vision in their dream, Baba gave them the experience of its truth in the waking state, thus describing the incomprehensible Leela of Sadguru, the mother. In Chapter 29, appears the story of the bhajan singing group from Madras who had gathered at the sacred Shirdi to witness the grand spectacle of the mumnifence of Baba, who was the simple, guileless Lord Shankara. The astounding manner in which Raghunath Tendulkar's son passed the examination Baba's marvellous Leela in removing Tendulkar's worry about his pension. How devotee Dr. Hate, who was Baba's loving devotee, was giving darshan in a dream at dawn, in an interesting account of these. The 30th chapter contains the story of one Kakaji Ved, a devotee of the goddess Saptashringi. The vision that the goddess gave him, saying he should see Sai Baba, the chief amongst the saints, and how Madhav Rao, who had made a vow to the same goddess, went to Vani after thirty years to fulfill that vow. 
and also the stories of Seth Kushal Chand of Rahata and Ram Lal, the Punjabi Brahmin, in whose dreams Baba went to say, Come to Shirdi. In chapter 31, we are told how the sannyasi Vijay Anand set out from Madras to go to Mansarovar, but was made to stay back by Sai Baba, who was Sri Krishna himself. How the great devotee Mankar, who was like the black bee in the lotus feet of Sai, and also the fierce, cruel tiger, who both got uplifted and got Sadgati. Chapter 32 quotes Sai's words that we four virtuous people wandered around in the forest in search of God, and when I had given up my ego completely, Guruvara gave me darshan. This story, along with another narration by Sai and the story of Gokhale Bai, who went on a fast, are narrated in this chapter by Hemad, who sings about their novelty. Chapter 33 comprises of the stories of a friend of Narayan Jani, who was suddenly bitten by a scorpion, of the daughter of another devotee who was plagued by fever, about the daughter of Chandurkar, harassed by labour pains, who, when no one could think of anything to relieve her pains, became very sad at heart, about the great devotee Kulkarni Sahib and Bala Bua, the bhajan singer, all of whom realised the great impact of Baba's Udi. And lastly, the charming and instructive tale of the Dakshina given by a devotee, Hari Bhau Karnik, who was very devout and trusting. The 34th chapter narrates the story of the nephew of a doctor from Malikaum, who was suffering from a bone tumour, of the staunch devotee, Dr. Pillay, who was severely afflicted by guinea worms, the story of Bapaji of Shirdi, whose wife suffered the pain of bubonic plague, and of a small Iranian child suffering from fits, a gentleman from Hartha, seriously ill with kidney stones, and the wife of a Kaisthya Prabhu gentleman from Bombay, who was troubled by a difficult delivery. In all the above-mentioned stories of Chapter 34, it has been narrated in an interesting manner how these afflictions were instantly and totally removed merely by the touch of Baba's Udi. In Chapter 35 follows an account of how a friend of Mahajani who believed in worshipping the formless, turned an idol worshipper by taking Baba's darshan. How a solicitor from Bombay, Dharamma Shri Jetabai Thakkar, was given by the Guruvara grapes transformed from the seeded to the seedless variety. A kais gentleman from Bandra who could not sleep peacefully, and Bala Patil of Nivasa, how they both experienced the curative effect of Udi. Chapter 36 is about the two gentlemen from Go Mantaka who had made vows separately, one for a job and the other for tracing a robbery how they both forgot about the vows and were reminded of them by Sri Sai Baba, who knows the past, the present and future, who pervades the Brahman and whose greatness is indescribable. And the story of Sakaram, Aurang Badkar's wife, who rushed to Sai's feet to pray for a son 
and how Sai gave her a coconut and her wish was fulfilled. The 37th chapter charmingly describes the spectacle of the chaudi ceremony which is rarely to be seen anywhere but which Hemad Pant had seen with his own eyes. Chapter 38 contains a most interesting account of how the different dishes were cooked together in the handi to prepare various sweet dishes that were served by baba to all as prasad. In chapter 39 comes the exposition of the stanza from the Gita beginning learn that by humble reverence etc that baba gave to chandorkar to remove his conceit about his knowledge of the sanskrit language and the vision in which sai the king among the saints appeared to babu sai putti commanding him to build the temple chapter 40 narrates the story of how dev wrote to baba to invite him for the udyapan of his mother's vows when he was going to feed the brahmans how three honorable individuals dressed as sanyasis came on the day and went away after having their meal with the brahmans and yet they did not recognize the guru's leela in this and also the story of how after appearing in a vision to hemar baba came to a meal as promised but in the form of a bas relief containing the same story of the bas relief in chapter 41 the poet describes at length to the devotees in his charming style the incomprehensible power of the sadguru and also how sai appeared like rudra when he became red as the glowing embers with anger and showered abuses on dev how sai also told him in a dream to read the shri gnaneshwari every day as a rule explaining the proper method of reading it chapter 42 tells us about the prior hint given by sai about his nidan how the death of ram chandra and tatya was averted then the sacred account of sai sadguru's niryan which makes the listeners sad and agitates hemar's mind in the next two chapters 43 and 44 hemar pant completes without a doubt the account of baba's niryan which had remained incomplete in the previous chapter in chapter 45 we have an account of how kaka sahib dikshit when he was once reading nath bhagwat with kaka mahajani and madhav rao was assailed with doubts and madhav rao's explanation did not satisfy dikshit's mind but anand rao parke resolved his doubt by narrating his dream and also how sai samarth answered the question as to why malsapati could not sleep on the plank suspended from the roof as this has been told in a skillful narration chapter 46 describes baba's marvelous leelas of wandering freely everywhere though seated in his own place is going to kashi gaya in an unusual manner to show a miracle to the people a baba a gem amongst the saints permitted shama to attend the marriage of chandorkar's son and at gaya baba's photograph suddenly came before his eyes and how sai the veritable lord shankar of the three eyes narrated the story of the previous birth of two goats such are the interesting sweet and profound stories in this chapter similarly in chapter 47 sai 
who was Brahma Vishnu Mahesh incarnate, narrates the past story of a frog and a snake, or rather of a greedy money lender and his debtor. To show through this nectar sweet story how one has to take rebirth to atone for the sins of enmity, murder, and debt. Amard has beautifully described it here. Chapter 48 deals with the story of a staunch devotee's Shevde's law examination and the grace bestowed on Sapatnekar, who had no faith. Chapter 49 narrates the stories of Hari Kanoba from Mumbai and the malicious minded Swami Somdevji who came to Shirdi with the conceited mind to test the saint and how on their taking darshan Sai at once pronounced their inward thoughts to their instant inward abashment drawing them to his feet and cleansing the sins of many, many births. Similarly, how Chandurkar, who was sitting near Baba, was stirred by emotion on seeing the beauty of a lady. In Chapter 50, Dabulkar has given at length the significance of the same stanza from the Gita, which begins with, Learn that by humble reverence, etc., supporting the exposition given by Baba. Chapter 51 describes how Hari Sitaram Dikshit, devotee Balaram Dhurandar, and the lawyer from Nanded called Pundalik first came to Shirdi, and the extraordinary story of each of them which will astonish the listeners and make the ocean of love in their hearts upsurge. In Chapter 52, reviewing the foregoing chapters of the book, Emad asks for Pasayadan, that may Baba destroy the wickedness of the wicked and protect the righteous, and bowing to the Sadguru's feet with humility, offering his head and pen at his feet, Emad completes the book, feeling fulfilled in the writing of it. In this way, Govindraya completes the chapters the Sri Sai Satcharita. Bowing lovingly at his feet, I make obeisance to the Sadguru, the mother of the universe. The narration, chapter by chapter, of the summary of a book is called the epitome which becomes the true highway to moksha for the seekers who desire moksha. The epitome may be slighted as being a torn rag used for the ornamental border and the end of a beautiful rich shela. But the intelligent listeners should listen to the request of the servant just once. This is taken from the Sri Sai Satchirita, translated by Indira Kher. Here I complete the commentary on the wonderful Pote, Om Sai Ram. Now that the commentary of the Pote is completed, I would like with gratitude to acknowledge the hard work that the devotees did to make it a success. Acknowledgements First, I am eternally grateful to my Sadhguru Sainath, who blessed me to write a commentary on the Sri Sai Satcharita. For without his will, not a leaf can move. However, this was not an easy task, as I have been helped by numerous devotees along the way, whom I would like to thank. I sincerely thank Nikhil Kriplani, who brought a bunch of like-minded people together to help with this humongous task, which started with the lockdown last year. 
Patiently, he put up with my tantrums and tears when he asked me to redo chapters 1 to 11. So he gave me a gem called Priyanka, who gave me pointers on each chapter and even the leelas that I could use. Not only that, she gave me the name of the book I had written it in. Thanks is a very small word as I am eternally grateful to you, Nickel, for encouraging and advising me at every turn. But most of all for bringing Priyanka into my life. She not only knows every word of the Charita, but has read almost every book that is written on Baba. So, my heartfelt thanks to both of you. I now thank Ramya and Sunita for embarking on the tedious task of giving subtitles, which is no easy task, as you had to put in hours and hours of listening to the audio again and again. I think Baba smiled on me the day that Anand, the editor, came into my life as I know that I have bothered and pestered him the most. And soon he became a friend and confidant. I plagued him with calls day and night, wrote him numerous mail and messages. But he, like Dikshit, was calm, and to my incessant calls, he would answer with a smile in his voice and respond with a Sairamma Unfortunately, I have not yet met him and I don't know what I will do when I do meet him. I never realized that the humming of the refrigerator, the rustling of a page or the whirling of the overhead fan could be such a nuisance. Thanks for diligently listening to the audio and erasing all these noises. I am extremely grateful to you for editing the videos so brilliantly and saying, Don't worry Ma, I will stitch them together and it will be fine. Really, don't worry. Yes, you indeed did a great deal of stitching for my audios. So a heartfelt thank you and a hug to you, dear Angel. I believe that guardian angels come into our lives in the form of people and Baba sent Anand and Sada for this project as I have troubled them the most. Sada would have to sit with me in a room with the windows shut to make it soundproof as the dogs bark all the time, turn the fan off and hold his phone to the side of my face and record. This he did so that the sound of the breathing would not be recorded. Oftentimes he had to record and re-record everything because of the dogs barking, the birds twittering and the traffic on the street below. Many times we recorded the chapter at 11 p.m. after Baba's sage arte, and at other times early in the morning before the dogs were up and barking. However, Sada patiently did it, finding time in his busy schedule. So, my heart felt thanks to him. Finally, I prayed to Baba to shower his blessings on each and every one in this team who quietly worked behind the scene and made this project a success. So, thank you. Om Sai Ram